For interior nighttime scenes, you have to insert lights into the scene in order to illuminate a space, just as you would in real life. Vectorworks provides a number of different light types, most of which are accessible using the light tool in the visualization palette. Now let's open the file for this exercise, building lobby night.vwx, and let's switch to saved view one and then render with OpenGL. You can see that the scene is dark because there are no lights placed in the space. So to begin, we will place lights in the room, but before that, we switch to top plan view to see this more clearly. So let's place the first light. Go to the visualization palette and click on the light tool. And then up in the toolbar, select the kind of light you prefer. Vectorworks provides a number of different lights here. You, you can select a directional light, which is equivalent to the sun a point light, as in a bare light bulb, or a spotlight, which is similar to a floodlight or a regular spotlight, which casts light in a specific direction. For this tutorial, we'll use a point light. So click on the point light mode button up here, and then click once in the scene over here to place a light. By the way, the first time you do this during a vector work session, the Light Preferences dialog box will open and you can leave the settings as they are for now. We'll be adjusting them in the Object Info palette. As soon as you've placed the light, go to the Object Info palette and let's make some changes. Notice that the light is already set up to cast shadows, but for this tutorial, let's also select Soft Shadows for, for a better and more realistic rendering. Next, let's adjust the brightness. We're putting a light in a very tall space, so we should make the light brighter. And for now, let's make this 150%. Let's adjust the distance fall off setting. This setting controls the rate at which the light falls off with distance. Click on the dist fall drop-down box, the distance fall off drop-down box, and take a look at the options. There are three options here. The first has no distance fall off at all. The second is called smooth and causes the light to fall off in a linear fashion. And the third selection called realistic causes the light to fall off in a much more accurate and realistic fashion. So let's choose realistic. Finally, let's raise the light to the correct height. And down at the bottom of the object info palette, there is a Z data field. Now remember that Z refers to height or elevation, so click in the data field and enter 5,000 millimeters, 5,000 millimeters. Switch to a front view, and now you can verify that the light is indeed at that height right under the ceiling. Now let's take a look and see how much light is in the scene now. Switch to saved view one and render with realistic interior fast. Notice that the amount of light here is really not sufficient to illuminate the entire room. And this light's brightness is equivalent to about a 150 watt incandescent bulb. So to add more light to the room, we can either increase the strength of this light or add more lights to the room. So for this tutorial, we'll add more lights. Switch to top plan view and make sure the light is selected. And now duplicate that light and move it down to about here. Switch back to saved view one and render again with realistic interior fast. You can see that there's quite a bit more light now, but even more light is still needed. Before going on, notice that the rendering is displaying these little icons of light objects. These are useful to see when you're working in wireframe view because you can see where the lights are and you can move them and select them and other things, but they're not so desirable in a rendering. So we can make them invisible in the renderings by, by doing this. Go to the Vectorworks Preferences, click on the Display tab at the top, and then on the right side next to Display Light Objects, click on the drop-down box and select only in wireframe, then click OK. And now the scene will re-render, 
but without showing those light icons. The light icons will only show when you're in wireframe and not in the renderings. So now we'll add more lights in the room and to make this easier and also to increase the visual realism of the scene, the file includes models of light fixtures already placed under the ceiling as you can see over here. There are 10 of these models distributed throughout the room. I can switch to top plan view for a second and now you can see the fixtures. Okay, I'll switch back. These light fixture models are symbols, actually, but they don't contain any light objects in them. So our next task is to edit the symbol that's used in these models and then add a light object. And once we've added a light object to the symbol, that light will automatically appear in each instance of that symbol in the room. It's a way of increasing the number of lights in the room using a symbol instead of adding 10 individual lights one by one. And now let's delete the lights that we added earlier since we're replacing them with the light fixtures that we're editing. And now double click on one of the light fixtures in order to edit the symbol. And in the edit symbol dialog box, select 3D component, 3D component. And now we're looking at a side view of the fixture in the symbol. So let's zoom in to where we can see the model of the light bulb in the fixture. And now let's insert a light object. In the visualization palette, click on the light tool and then in the toolbar select point light mode. And now click in the drawing more or less in the middle of the light bulb right here. Let's go to the object info palette to make some adjustments. Select soft shadows. Change the brightness to 150 just as we had it before. And then click on the distance fall off drop down box and select realistic. realistic. One more thing to do, we need to make sure that the light object is in fact centered on the light fixture model. So switch to top plan view and then click on the fit to objects button up here and we can see that the light is indeed centered in the model. So click on the exit symbol button on the upper right side and we're back in the scene. Let's switch to saved view 2 for a wider view of the room. Now render with realistic interior fast. By the way, it may take a little bit of time to render because darker scenes can sometimes take a bit longer to render than scenes that have a lot of light in them. Let's recap for a minute what we've done. First, we've created a single light object and placed it in the scene. And then we added another light object to add more light. And finally, we deleted those lights and instead added a light object to a symbol of a light fixture that was already in the scene. And once we edited that one symbol, the light appeared in each instance of that symbol throughout the scene. So we ended up actually adding a great deal more light to the scene that way. Now for a better quality view, render with realistic interior final, but just be aware that the rendering will take considerably longer to complete than using realistic interior fast. Now before we finish, we'll do one more thing. Let's add a couple of spotlights to illuminate the artwork on the walls. Switch to top plan view first, and now go to the visualization palette. Click on the light tool, and then up in the toolbar, select the spotlight mode, which is this one. Now we'll place the light. Click once uh, over the table here next to the sofa, and then drag the cursor over to the artwork next to the wall and click on the artwork or snap to the artwork. And now we've placed a spotlight and let's make a few adjustments in the object info palette. Select soft shadows and in the distance fall off drop down box select realistic and we're going to make the light strong so give the light a brightness of 300 percent. Now let's adjust the height of this light in the Z data field enter 5000 millimeters and in the look to data field, enter 1000 millimeters. This means that the light is right under the ceiling and it's pointing to a target that is 1000 millimeters above the floor. Now switch to saved view three and then render again with realistic interior fast to see the light in action.
Now add one more spotlight on the second artwork. So switch to top plan view and duplicate the first spotlight and move it to the side like this. In the object info palette, go down to the pan data field. It controls the amount of pan. There's tilt and pan fields available. Go to the pan data field and next to the existing figure, enter minus 90 and then press tab. So entering minus 90 will rotate the fixture to the right by 90 degrees. And now drag the fixture so it aligns with the second artwork here and then switch to saved view 2. And now render again with realistic interior fast to see the result. Let me mention a couple of things about spotlights. Here, I'll switch here to wireframe for a minute so it won't re-render. The spotlight has a number of interactive controls that can make it easier to adjust for particular effects. For example, the spread and beam diagram here actually lets you manually get a hold of the controls for the beam and the spread and make the adjustments visually. And the same happens with the pan and tilt controls at the bottom. You can enter the numbers manually but you can also drag the sliders and then see the effects interactively, especially when you're rendering in OpenGL, although that, that does depend on the file and, and how many lights there are and other things too. One other item, we're using these lights in their simplified format in keeping with the spirit of this getting started guide. But these lights also have more capabilities and refinements all of which are documented in the support documentation. So for example, when you have a light selected, you can go to the object info palette and select use emitter. And this will allow you to select a brightness for the light that is based on real life lighting data using either lumens or candelas as a lighting unit. A 100 watt incandescent bulb, for example, emits around 1750 lumens. And this can be replicated using these controls. Now, these lights that we have worked with in the tutorial are just a couple of several different types of lights available. There are also linear lights, similar to neon or fluorescent in their, in their light output. And there are area lights, similar to fluorescent ceiling fixtures. And there's even a texture called glow that can emit light and be incorporated into a light fixture. All of these are discussed in the support information available via help and other manuals. But what's important to know is, is that at the core, all of these are variations on the lights that we created in this tutorial and uh, work with and adjust it.